Hello everyone, Amanda here. Thanks for joining me. So today I'm going to make some pretty shabby chic envelopes for my shabby chic journal. I just thought I'd switch the camera on and share my process. So I've got uh, three different envelopes here. I've got a kind of a normal size one and, <coughs> excuse me, two smaller ones. <coughs> Try my best not to cough. I do apologise. Um, right, so first of all I want to just put some gesso on because I've done these quite a while ago and I can't remember. That one looks like it's been done with Vintage Photo, um, which will reactivate as soon as I dip it in anything. That looks like it's tea stained and that looks like it's tea stained. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I just want to put some gesso on. Um, I can't find my little plastic... Uh, card that I use for gessoing so I'm just using a bit of <laughs> packaging <laughs> and I'm just scraping some on front just so it turns down that colour and if it's vintage if it is vintage photo which I think it is it'll help what I'm gonna do next to kind of a deer rather than it just smoosh it out that's that one next so the only reason I'm using packaging you might be thinking well what you're using a bit of cardboard for I'll just use a brush just because um, it means that you're putting it on um, unevenly, on per kind of accidentally on purpose, it just helps you smoosh it on in a random fashion. Okay. Okay. It adds texture to it as well. Okay, leave that one there a minute. I'm going to need some more. Get some out of here. Okay. okay, so I'm just going to go away and dry these. And just clean that up and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so those are nice and dry and gessoed. Uh, so now I'm going to um, put a little bit of colour on them. I don't want it to... Is that... Is that these ink pads quite easily like, come apart. <laughs> they me mad. And let me see if I can get enough colour out of this ink pad to just add a little hint of pink. I don't want uh, dark colours, I don't want vintage, I want very subtle, very light shabby sort of colours because the kit that I'm using has a very subtle um, kind of mauves and pinks and blues in it. So I don't want bold colour at all. I'm not having any bold colour, I'm not putting any like gold on the edges or anything like that I want them to be fully shabby right and I want that to dry as it is so I'm just going to get the heat gun on it straight away because I like how it's looking if I get the heat gun on it straight away it'll dry exactly as it is That's perfect. All right, so I'm just going to finish the other two and then we will uh, start and decorate. Okay, so that's my envelopes nice and gessoed and a hint of pink. Okay, so now we can start and decorate them. Um, so I'm using my, what I normally use. You can obviously just use PVA or Mod Podge, whatever you want to use. I, this is just what I prefer. I'm not saying any is any better than the other. Right, let's have a look at this one. So I've got this napkin. 
um, it's like a postage style one I've shown it before I'm sure lots of people have got it and I've taken out the uh, these addresses here so that I can layer it on and I've done this before um, on uh, for, for envelopes for journals you know and I like to make them um, to me this is not something that I bulk make this is something that I make to fit the theme of each journal so like this one I wanted a touch of pink so that it fits with my journal I mean I suppose you could uh, do them in advance but I don't want all my envelopes to be dipped in pink ink <laughs> okay and that soon smooshes into the background with that gel medium so you can hardly even see that it was ever, ever a napkin and it just looks like it was written on I'm going to do the other two, I've got the napkins already trimmed out ready try and make things a bit quicker and make sure it's the right way around So this is just like French writing so that it looks like it's the address. That says 34 Rue Summit Summit Paris and that one says very similar. So they're, they're kind of like addresses. The napkin is uh, actually like a French postcard theme so I'll just take bits and bobs from it. Uh, I like. There we go. Put that one on. Is that the right way? Yeah. Okay. Tap that down. Okay. Alrighty. So, I might dry that. You could do with drying them in between them, um, but you know, I don't want to keep stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. So, I've got two napkins here that I like the look of. I'm not quite sure which I'm going to use. I quite fancy this one with the birds. Can't get any more shabby than that, can you? Beautiful. Um, and people do sometimes say, where do you get your napkins from? Um, I have a lot of, I do get a lot given, I'm quite lucky. And then, um, you know, have a look on eBay. Um, Amazon anywhere okay so I want to just I might let that cherry blossom go over the top of the actual writing there I'm not sure we'll see so I'm just going to using my water brush not too much water I'm just gonna wet a section So that I can rip it. You can fussy cut them, and I do sometimes, but I'm not in a napkin fussy cutting kind of a mood. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> okay. There we go. Then just leave it a minute. Okay. Just una memento, and then just gently. Try and start and separate the bit that you want carefully. Sometimes it can still rip where you don't want it to, but it's not in the world, it's just no napkin. Okay. And you can just rip it randomly, but I find that if you do the segments with a bit of water then you don't waste as much napkin okay right let's have a look now where I want this yeah I think I'm gonna have it going over yep so get my gel medium and the trick with this is not too totally soaky napkin so 
goes quite a long way does the gel medium obviously you know it's not as cheap as for example using um, what they call it you know PVA but I find that PVA leaves a plastica kind of a feel and sometimes a bit of a shiny look and then sometimes I mean I've seen people make things and put PVA glue over and then literally when they fold it in half it all cracks uh, because it's you know it's plastic air whereas the gel medium will uh, move with your project it won't just crack it'll move with your project so that's why some people like to use gel medium but it's not essential it's one of them things you know if you want to try it try it if you uh, prefer PVA then that's fine I don't I personally do not like Mod Podge it's not my thing I don't like it but just use what you what you've got right I'm getting that a little bit too wet now so I'm just going to but I like how it's going over the I dress a little bit, I think it's cute. I'm just going to quickly dry that off, just bear with me one minute and then I will, and I'm not bothered, it doesn't um, uh, bother me at all if my napkin is slightly wrinkled because to me it's added texture. You can always sand it with a um, nail file if it bothers you, it doesn't bother me, I like it. rather than waste and cut it off I'm just going to put a little bit just around the edge there fold it over otherwise you'd just trim it off and throw it in the bin it's not necessary you can just use it now that bit I'm going to struggle to fold over because <laughs> it's teacher so that bit I will just carefully trim off Okay, duck. I like that. That's pretty. Okay, just trim it a bit better. Right. So, what have I got? That's that one. I think I'll do all my napkin in. I want to put something there or something there. So let's have a look. What we got? Uh, Use this bit of cherry blossom here that's been left behind. And put that there. I'll show it all there. I'll show it on there. All oh, pretty. Duke, that's that one. That one's a little bit too like this. It's too uniform, is that? So I'm just gonna sand it a bit to there we go. Just wear it back a bit because it's too straight. All right, so that's that bit. Let's give that a quick whiz with the heat gun. So what I'll do is I'll do all of this one and then I will do the others but I will fast forward it so that you're not having to watch all of it all over again. Right, I'm just going to rip this bit. I want that bird.
some of that cherry blossom okay sometimes I like to just rip it because I don't want the you know I don't want obvious edges so by ripping it you get it more random okay I want it really pretty and really shabby. So I need to remind myself which way up it's going. It's going that way because it's going to... And then when that's folded over a, a page, then you'll see that pretty bird on the other side. Okay. Pretty. Right, let me just. I am going to trim that straight across the top. Wonder if I can just rip it. Now it's wet. Yeah. Just be careful with it. There we go. And then smooth that edge back down. Okay. I'll trim that off in a minute when it's uh, when I've dried it. Right, so now I'm going to add a little stampy. I want a postage stamp. I'll let me... And I'm not, uh, you know, don't have to have the stamps pink. I'm not that. I'm not going to be that worried about it. Let me just. that on. I've got my little, I don't want any, I don't think I want any like vintage photo on these. I want them to just be shabby and a bit pink. There we go, so I've just dipped it in the ink a bit. Glue that on. I'm not putting any fabric on this one, I don't think, because I've gone so, you know, because I've put so much of the napkin on, I don't think it needs it. But on the others that I'm going to fast forward, I've got some lace bits and bobs waiting at the side. <sighs> Although that's pretty, isn't it? Might just have a little bit of lace, just there. I shall leave it there. Mm. No, I like it there. Tiny bit of lace, change my mind like I always do. A little bit of lace there, it doesn't matter if it hangs over because it'll end up being on like the edge of a page, like you know, like that. So that looks nice. Right, let's have a look. Let's find something to. I quite like that. I'm going to stick that on. That's an off cut that I shabbed up for something else and then never used. So I'm going to stick it on. Just on the top of there. Give that a press. Quickly dry that. And that's that's that one done. Okay, so I'm going to do the rest now and probably fast forward it with the voiceover. All right. Okay, so I fast forwarded the next two napkins. I'm going to be decorating them in much the same way. I'm just finishing this one off. I decided to ink the edges with one of my pink inks uh, <laughs> just to make it stand out a bit. But I was determined I wasn't putting any vintage photo on these envelopes. 
so I've used that lovely pale pink colour. So then the other two, I've got this beautiful rose napkin and I decided to just cut it out with scissors. It's just a little bit of a faster process than using, you know, water. Although using the brush like I did earlier in the video is more precise. <laughs> um, but I, uh, it was getting where the uh, were taking me quite a while. So I speeded it up a little bit. Um, I found some again another stamp and another element from the um, fussy cutting that I've done recently for my shabby chic journal so yeah and then adding the postage marks and instead of using black I'm using a, a dusty rose colour kind of uh, ink which is quite nice just for something a little bit different so I decided I want to add some little bits of fabric so I've got the uh, snippet cluster fabric snippet cluster I made quite a while ago so I'm just uh, trimming some bits off and sticking them on I um, no real rhyme or reason other than to just add extra interest to them and I do like when I'm doing shabby stuff to add a little bit of fabric just wrapping around things that are on my desk there that uh, specimen label may not necessarily be shabby chic but it was on my desk so it's going on um, because I like to use up things that are hanging about on my desk as well um, so yeah so, more paper ephemera from the kit that I'm using and just gluing it on and edging with that dusky it's like a dusty rose coloured ink it's very pretty and then onto the third and final napkin I'm adding the little cluster there um, that I made when I made my handmade buttons it's been hanging around on my desk since I did that video and so I've told myself I'm using it um, so it's going on this envelope so there you go uh, same process with the napkin and then adding that cluster I think it looks really pretty more paper ephemera um, edging it in the same pink colour doing the postage marks and uh, edging with that nice pink and then what I do do um, is make sure everything's dry and then I'm going to start and add some modelling paste so to make them a little more shabby and add some touches of white rather than just gessoing over the top of everything I'm going to add some modelling paste and I'm using a cute uh, it's called trellis I think I can't I never remember the names of things but this is a sample one um, and yeah so I'm adding it on in just in random spots just little bits of it here and there it adds texture it adds interest and it's adding some white shabbiness to those um, quite vibrant um, envelopes there and I'm not going to add any colour to them okay so there all. we go that's all I'm doing to these now um, I'm not going to colour the modelling paste and I'm not going to rub over the top with it with a different colour because I want it to retain that crisp white colour okay what I will do is I will bind these together with some pretty ribbon for the thumbnail um, and those have, have turned out lovely Every, each one's different they're completely and utterly unique to me because I've made them and it's just a little bit of something different to add to your journals. I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching the process and I hope you'll give it a go, get your napkins out, get your stamps out and have some fun. Thanks for watching, bye for now.